Hey, how you doing? Let's do it to it. Okay, Doki, analyze. We'll start up. <coughs> okay. This is uh, a game from the World Youth Championship, <coughs> round five. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Sophie Tina um, is uh, who is playing uh, White and Aggie. I'll write there. I'll write who it is. <laughs> Sorry about this. Can't uh, pronounce their name exactly right. So S O P H I E T E I N That, those are the two. White, that's white. <clears throat> that's who white is. So, okay, let's do it. And they have a, uh, before they get into the um, talk, it's more of a, uh, like, 11 moves. So we'll just uh, zoom past the 11 moves. E4, E6. So it's more of a French. And they did the winnier variation of the French. Actually, the classic, surprisingly. This is the classic line. Bishop d3. <coughs> Bishop e7. Knight g2. And uh, castles for black. Oops. Castles for white and rook e8, knight to uh, g3. So white's uh, basically trying to get all the all of their pieces going. So uh, c uh, c6, bishop g5. So white's fully developed except for. Um, Getting the queen involved, and then basically uh, whites in the um, old middle game, and black still trying to get out of the uh, opening. So knight bd2, <clears throat> queen f3, uh, h6, and bishop f4. The interesting thing was. The queen played queen to b6, which is actually a slightly dubious, which is actually a dubious uh, setup here. Potentially, um, white could try to expand maybe on the queen side with something similar to this here, and then uh, play bishop fianchettoed out here. Or, what you could do is play using what Sam Williams plays is uh, c5 so that you can start expanding on the queen side. There's uh, there's even uh, knight g to um, e uh, c maybe. So maybe you could play this here and then in here try to uh, lock that down. Queen b6 was actually played though. Da uh, dangerous move to uh, move the queen away from the king, especially when there are so many pieces gathered on the king side. So white, that's the reason it was a mistake. Black moved uh, their pieces away from the protection of the king. And uh, white does not really much care if they lose the bee pawn. If they can get mate, white's going to go for mate. So, so knight c d two c e two 
F5 uh, was also a potential idea, F5, to have kind of tried to pry open the center, I mean the king side, after like a potential queen takes, knight takes here, pawn takes, bishop takes, and then and then now we have uh, queen g, so here dash, <clears throat> black would have to play there, then uh, the queen would be coming in with serious damage. If he takes here, it's basically mate two. <clears throat> Sorry, wrong, wrong move. Mate two. That that's what I meant. So. Queen uh, Black got greedy and took the pawn like, yay, I get a pawn. Knight f5. <clears throat> Bishop f8. And Rook fb1. That This was kind of a reactive move. She actually played this move. This was reactive. She should not have done that. <clears throat> she should have continued with her plan of um, queen g3 and then went with uh, with a tremendous blow on h uh, h6 <coughs> excuse me this is a natural uh, thing the um, the coming knight a here is actually a major blunder because knight takes h kazang would actually come in this check so black is forced to move his king this is uh this was missed this uh black f uh, to force the move it was missed so basically that's what she was saying this move was missed and if he can't take the only move they can do is move the king and uh knight takes here uh, King g8, knight h6, king h8, and then queen to uh, g6 with a really superior position to the one that she acquired because now they're coming in with mate on uh, h, h7. So, but she played this um, mistake here. Queen a3. <clears throat> Uh, knight, she also played another mistake. It's not a bad move. Uh, knight to, uh, she actually played this move here, knight ge. But a better move was actually queen g3 with the same idea of coming in, crashing in through with this idea, and then coming back there, and then coming in with the queen. Kaboom, right there. So this was, this was another mistake. Queen a4. And then this, hey. Okay. Hi. <clears throat> this was actually a double a slam move. Surprisingly, this was a really good move. It would have been hard. Uh, the uh, correct sacrifice, because bishop takes, and uh, knight, uh, knight, F, knight to f5 to uh, take scope here, and then and scope, scope here, with the queen coming over. <clears throat> now you see why this queen... Uh, being offside really messed up Black's camp, and so that's <clears throat> when you see that Black is starting to move their most powerful pieces off to one side. My teacher told me, and in, uh, in chess, that's called being heavy on one side, and uh, to go after a lone pawn, it wasn't worth it.
Okay, let's see here. Bishop takes. <clears throat> Knight F. He's, they're trying to get their uh, pieces back into the fray. <clears throat> but it's a little too, little too late. Knight takes. King takes. Bishop takes H6. King takes H6. Queen, uh, king takes, queen takes, check. And uh, knight g6. <coughs> queen takes, pawn, so now we're attacking here, here. c3, one second. Rookie 6. <clears throat> and uh, she was talking about that it was actually a, um, I think it was a lady who a young lady who played this that this move uh, she actually played e c3 but um, she was talking that this move here was actually the best move rook takes b7 if bishop takes, then you have uh, queen takes e6. And uh, with that, you're actually totally owning. And if, um, let me see here, I gotta make sure I have this right. Rook takes, oh, queen d6, okay. Queen takes d6, queen h7. Uh, I think they may have had that wrong. What? Oh, I got you because of this rook here. Gotcha. King g5. <clears throat> and basically, you can bring this rook over here and uh, have a tremendous attack coming down the pike. Played c3, which was a um, mistake. Queen a, queen a3, and then uh, bishop takes g was actually a, a uh, pure out blunder. It was a blunder here. At this point, rook takes here is a double exclam. Rook takes uh, b, b2 is actually a double exclam. Because <clears throat> now the queen can't get involved, even if the queen... Even if um, you grabbed here, and then you brought the rook can't come over because you win it. So, <clears throat> so even if the queen tried to um, maybe here to go after this rook, you actually are winning. Mate five, I believe, is. Let me see. What is the mate five? Let me see here. What is the mate in five? Hold on, I just want to see. Queen h7, okay. So I had that right. Can she five? Uh, okay, so f4. Uh, f Knight takes f4. Queen f5. Okay, and then rook h7 is mate. Gotcha. I just had to be sure. This was a pure out uh, blunder here. Happens to the best of us. Queen f4. She's saying that rook uh, rook to um, rook to e uh, rook e one first was actually a, a better idea with 
the infiltration. And if the queen tried to come in here, you could potentially play uh, rook. Rook comes over, and then you start bringing in the reinforcements. Got to be careful your back rank, though. So black, uh, black could try something like this. So you got to be really on on your toes. King h7, then rook e1. Here black is better since uh, she is able to develop her pieces. Black's actually better here. She can develop her pieces now. Bishop, um, Bishop e6. They're saying that uh, potentially bishop to uh, g4 is actually a much better uh, positional idea. It, it, then, then you could double over here and uh, potentially get your queen involved here and start trading down and go to a win. Rook takes on e6. Rook takes, and then queen uh, f7, king uh, h8. Uh, queen takes e6, queen takes c, queen d5, king g8, rook e1, rook f8. Rook f8, uh, h5, h4 here. Surprisingly, white's better here. Queen d2, trying to get the, the queen involved right back here. f3, pawn f3. And also, the attack here would have been a tremendous blow. That's why I should play f3. G3 is an interesting line. King h8. Oops, not h7. h8. And rook e5. Which is actually an idea that could have been used now instead of prolonging the game. This actually would have uh, been really strong. Because uh, there's really nothing that uh, black could do at this moment. Black's in a world of hurt. <clears throat> Queen would actually have to um, go back to protect. And now black's mainly passive. F3. A6 was actually played here. Rookie f 2 to attack the queen, queen c1 check, king uh, h2, queen f4 check, king, uh, king uh, h3, queen c1, because if she actually exchanged, she went queen c1. Yeah, if uh, she actually, oh, hey, thanks, thank you for the raid. If she actually exchanges here, this actually will benefit uh, white because of uh, how far advanced the pawns are. They're, this they'll end up going up the board, and it's just uh, tremendous. It would be a tremendous blunder if she did that. So what she actually did is decided to try to somehow get in behind the H1 here and uh, kind of cause a little uh, chaos there. But I really, I think uh, what uh, Black should have done instead of moving back was maybe potentially trying to, yeah. Oh, glad you do. That, you know what, it's a gift the Lord has given me and I'm wanting to share it. I'm glad you enjoy it. Okay, and uh, so,
potentially this could be a check too if they if she wanted a perpetual but I still I prefer um, white here for one uh, one reason mainly is I like that uh, white has more pass pawns and that's a huge that's big time the, these two pawns surprisingly remind me a lot of a Maroxy bind yeah remind me of a lot of a Maroxy bind but uh, so this this wasn't played they actually she actually played c1 but these two pawns really do a a2 and d4 really do a good job on stopping this massive chain where these uh, three pawns can roam free up the board and just totally overwhelm the king. They're like, you know, in football, you can consider them the line that breaks your line. And these guys are like the linebackers charging right at your HQ, your uh, quarterback. It's like, you don't want that. You're going to get a lot of pain if you're the QB. And so that, I guess that's why Black tried to keep the queen on the board, maybe to try to slow these monsters down. Because these things can just, just, they can just roll up the board. Trust me, I've done it before in uh, a, cu a couple positions. They were really cool when you can, when you can start getting these guys just rolling, boom, 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 up the board. But she had a couple times. The uh, white had a couple times of actually winning here, and uh, that's a uh, potentially a. Um, sad thing, but it happens. You know what? We miss ideas, but it's just, it's like what we see at the very end. How do you handle the mistake? Do you learn from it and then keep going? And of course, White didn't let uh, her guard down. She kept flowing. She kept going with the punches. Realized she might have missed a couple moves, but you know what? As long as you get the win, that's all that matters. You could take it home and then find out where you can perfect it next time. So a6 was played. A6, let's see, rook here, C. Okay, king h2. She's uh, trying to stop the queen infiltration to h1. Oh. That's okay. I'm glad you uh, like it. But, okay, but so this kind of, now she's going to try to come back with f4 and get a perpetual. This is the best for black. If white would have lot uh, black that it never happened, so we uh, <laughs> that would have been sad if it had of. So can you shoot f can h three, queen c one, and then rook now. Uh, white said to the to the mighty queen, you better go home because uh, my uh, artillery is now guarding the king. So. The artillery is shutting down all lines of a uh, of an attack on the back of the king there. So, so the queen basically has to run now. Queen d2, or she can stay there. But I would kind of tr maybe try to trade off. Ah, come on, there we go. Trade off maybe something like this. But that's just me. Our, I guess what she's trying to do, the other side is trying to hold back these pawns again, like what we just talked about. If uh, White can get the pawns going, an avalanche would happen. And that's actually what uh, White actually starts doing is now she's involving her queen and she's going to try to get the rook. See, rather than the, the rook being here, the, she wants to get her rook up here and over. And the only way to do that is to kind of move the queen off to the side a little bit. And she doesn't want to really trade. She doesn't mind even giving this pawn up. Potentially you could even if the queen got greedy and took. Oops, actually the queen's in, king's in check. So that would uh, make sense to move it. But e5, e5 is now uh, playable and mate is coming pretty soon if... Uh, there is a retreating square, so the queen now has to finally, black has to retreat to its main camp, and queen is now on defensive duty, and you do not want that. When that's when that is happens, when the queen's on defensive duty, you're in trouble, big time trouble. 
because that means that something's amiss. And of course, the king's safety is the thing that's amiss in this one. Okay, let's see. King, queen, all right. Rook, 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 rook. Okay, e5, queen, h. All right, rook. Here we go. Now she's trying to... And Come on. Come on. There you go. She's trying to get a, uh, a rook. One click. Trying to get a rook here to pin. Of course, the most standard... Uh, attack is the the pin I mean, of a tactic. Rook g5 also restricts the queen. She was saying that potentially rook g5 is a really strong move too because it actually uh, will stop rook uh, g8 because uh, of course we just grab it. And the queen has to stay here which what that means is basically rook the rook would have to come up here and uh, then the rook would have to slide over, but then you get mate, so it's like this is just not turning out too well for uh, white. I mean, for black, white should have played this instead. But you know, she might have been in time trouble, so she just went with a standard idea of uh, ugh, come on, there you go, um, coming over like this, which makes sense. It still puts fear in the heart of the player when you can lose your queen for a rook, so. Rook f4. And rook h, here we go. Rook takes. And then rook takes check. Now these monsters of pawns are gonna start to uh, come, uh, come to their pinnacle now. After it takes, of course he's gotta take and here they come. Even if even if she loses one, th this pawn is just gonna crawl up the board like a boom boom and up till till it queens. So wow, a king and pawn end game. Three pawns would have uh, always as long as you have the as long as white can control these two pawns out of the three. Uh, she said it's a uh, win by um, theory. The theory of it is a win. And there's also a Jeremy Silman uh, idea that if there's two pawns that are doubled like this, if there's two pawns that are doubled and all these other pawns are gone, it's still a win even if the king's here because you have one, you are able to pass the uh, the opposition with one move at the very end. You just pull, push one pawn up and the king has to give way and then you slip in here and that pawn just comes up the board. So it's all based on, now we're getting into the end game phase. We were in the end game phase, but now we're in the pure, I call it the pure end game phase with a, uh, when the pawns versus the king. And it's really entertaining to see how these young uh, um, prodigies actually get a lot, how they handle the end game. So g4, and he and she can't take because if she was to take here, that'd be a complete blunder. So this would actually be a double question mark, and there's no way to ever stop this at this point. White would even be okay with uh, giving black that pawn. But, so she did not play that. She fought on a little longer. Her opponent did. Uh, e5. Oops, hold on. Sorry, uh, there we go. E5. Now that these, these pawns are basically fortified, you don't have to push him any further down the board than you don't want to. You can now get the king involved. If you're a little more concerned, you can gobble these pawns up. And then have the king have black come over and black will worry about these two pawns at this point and then these three pawns will end up becoming queens. So you could do the as they as I like to call it, uh Jeremy call Jeremy Silman calls it uh fox in the chicken coop type of way of doing it. 
you uh, allow him to worry about these. Actually, sorry, you allow him to worry about these two pawns here. Ugh, come on. What are you doing? There you go. To worry about these two pawns while these three pawns promote up the board. So, let us see. Let's continue onward. Uh, okay, g5, king of e. Okay, a5. Black's last ditch attempt is to uh, get her pawns rolling. A4, C5, B5. Now, now if uh, Black takes, if White takes the bait and bites here, it's uh, a little too late. Well, it, it, it's actually losing for uh, for White at this point. Black would actually be the one that potentially is winning here because there's no way to stop the creation of a pass pawn for black. So white has to basically come closer to b4 is the only move that would actually stop that. R, she just played f, uh, you could play f, f4, kind of putting the pawns in, a, in the king and zook swamp position. G6 was played here, which is a mis missed move. Potentially, um, uh, let me see here. Maybe trying to get the king over here. I don't know. Try maybe trying to shove a king into the the point. I think Black was getting frustrated at this point. She actually played King G6, which is not the best. Cause that allowed a check. I think she should have stayed, kept her king up, uh, up around here, and then at the right moment brought the king back to try to lock down these pawns. But you know, when you're frustrated, you you make inaccurate moves. So a three. Oops. Uh, oh, a three. Sorry. Now, now white has uh, basically locked everything down. This is going to be kind of a longer end game, though. King h7, and so we'll just do more end game phase moves. King g7, f5 to keep the pawns a rolling. King g8 to try to see if she can't plug up the position. She's hoping that somehow that there would be a pocket that she can shove the king in here. She's hoping to get a pocket that white makes a mistake here and then she'd get a king there and basically say a draw. But I don't think white's going to um, allow her that uh, pleasure of that happening. Who knows? You know, you never know what could happen. But we, we know the result of this game. It's a win for white, so... Mate in 10, King G8, G6. Now the pawns are just rolling up the board. King H8, which is a mistake again. F6, King G8, F7. Wow, just the these pawns are just monsters. H7. Ooh. There's no way if you came in here if you were thinking this this could actually queen and if he takes there then this queens would check so the the stopping idea of this doesn't work anymore. It's a really interesting uh she played this here. Um she played C, uh, what was that? C5, let me see here. Mm, gotta make sure I'm on the right one. C, King, G8, F. Ah, oh, C5, here we go. King takes C5, B4. King takes B4. King, G7. H8 equals queen. King takes H8. Actually, she actually took here. 
And then she, yeah, she had to be careful that she didn't turn it into a queen because I'm, she turned it into a rook. I'm thinking still if you turn it into a queen, is it still, I don't think it's a draw even if you turn it into a queen. I think she could just turn this into a queen and even if she went like this, you would have that, so. But she turned it into a rook. Probably out of concern of a stalemate setup. G5. Queen uh, here, check. King H5 and then uh, mate. Overall good game, but she said she could have improved uh, ha halfway through. Instead of going into an end game, she could have actually won in the middle game. Okay, Doki. Let's uh, work a little bit on some uh, end game, and then we'll go into some positional play. Now we're going to look at a uh, Lucinda position here. There's uh, two two uh, types. There's a Lucinda and a Philidor's uh, position. A Lucinda is where you you make basically a rail. I'll show you here. I'll get it set up. A Philidor's position is how uh, you can actually draw in a lost endgame. It was actually the uh, first, the, the setup move was actually first published in 1634 and by uh, this person here. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll, I'll write it in. I think that's, oops, wait a second. Did I forget a V? No V. Uh, oh, I forgot a V. I have to capitalize the name because it's. Yep. That that's the that's the person who first uh, published it. In the it was the the ear, uh, the earlier books of by Lucinda. It was simply a uh, it was actually a, a work of Endgame basically. Okay, here's the most standard Endgame setup for a Lucinda. It's always good to go over your end games because end games are really vital when it comes to um, play. Because that, that's the area where which is uh, that lacks the most study, in my opinion. That's what me and my teacher also, um, Josh Wade Skins and Bruce Pontefini, um, did a lot of end game studies. So I figure if uh, Josh Wade Skins did that and Bruce Ponifini uh, believes in it and Jeremy Silman why not uh, do some studies in that okay so what you have to uh, in the Lucinda position you have to oops I gotta make sure I don't push my space bar by accident you have to make sure that your rook's not too close to the king but you also have to make sure that your king can come in via here and protect be protected I'll show you if here rook uh oops sorry my bad I, I you first got to check I, I forgot about that first have to check then when he comes up then you come to f4 that's right and then when he comes here you come here when he comes there you can you can actually come here when he comes here you have to be careful here, 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 and there. And this, this is considered the Lucinda position, where now this pawn's going to queen. But you have to do it just right. You have to make sure that the king uh, goes over this way, over to g7. <clears throat> and you're probably wondering, what happens if the king, uh, after checks, oops, goes here? Well, you can actually play king e8, and at this point, um, even if he plays rook d, uh, d1, you can queen, and rook takes, rook takes. This is a still winning endgame, because you have a rook and a king. 
And all you're going to do is push the king off to the side of the board, get your king here, and then mate. So, and you have to set up the Lucinda 100% um, right, because other, otherwise sometimes you'll uh, you'll miss out on a Lucinda position. There's many uh, positions that have actually that's happened. Okay, let me see here. Okay, now we've okay. Hold on, let me get to the part in the book where Jeremy Soma talks about it. G, okay, G7, we did that one. Rook to hit, okay, okay. Yeah, you have to, you got to be careful that you don't fall. You don't want to accidentally uh, come rook to e8 and try doing this because this actually activates the, the, the king. And if you tried, uh, you know, coming this way, and you tried coming over here, all he does is come back to attack this pawn. So that's why you have to move your rook. After the check in King G2, you move your rook to F4 so that at the right moment, you can even go, you can, if he plays here, you can even come out this way if you wanted to. It's kind, it's like, it's basically very similar to triangula triangulation in the end game. You base, you go like this, and then you come down, and then the rook comes over. So you're like triangulating. And that that happens. Jeremy Silma calls building the uh, building the moat or building the bridge. No, it's, and then now we're going to look at a uh, pure uh, Philandor's position. So we'll uh, come on up and look at uh, the Philandor's position. We'll board edit now. Okay. Um. Alrighty. Row. Here. Here. Let's get our pawn there. Yeah. This is, that's a pure Lucinda position. And that, that actually does happen in some games. A Lucinda position could can arise uh, pretty uh, very readily accessible in some end games. You're always you always have that opportunity for that to come to pass. Okay, let's see whose turn is it. Oh, whoever whoever to move is a draw. He said, so let's actually set up a a pure one. Okay, that that was Jeremy Silman's one for a draw. This one right here is I think it's a Lucinda that is actually doomed. This is a difference of uh of the Lucinda here. At this point, it's white to move. Oh, it's did I make it black to move? Drat, hold on. Let me switch. Uh, let me switch to white. In this scenario here, the old classic skewer is going to happen. But if uh, if white was the one that actually had a rook here and black had a rook here, so if white had the rook here and black had the the rook here, it would. Oops, and the the I gotta put. This is a lost, basically, Philidor. This is because of uh, Jeremy Stillman says that if black get, has a passive king and a passive rook, and white can get his king active and his other rook and his rook active, it's a doomed uh, Philidor's position. But a pure Philidor one is a little different here. You can actually hold, I believe, let me see if we, uh, I got a, pull up a new board editor here board editor uh, let me see okay perfect here we go and it's uh, but black it, it, you if uh, this right here could happen if it's black to move it doesn't matter even if it's black to move if he plays here you still have this type of a setup and there's no way for uh, for white to our black to not lose material because of up here it's a, a weak position his rook gets skewered it doesn't matter 
if it was white or our black to move, he's doomed. He loses his rook because of uh, the strength of the rook on the seventh. That's what Jeremy Soma talked about. He says that if you're defending a Philidor's position, don't allow your rook to become passive. That's what he said. The idea of swinging the rook over to the other side is worth remembering since you'll be able to use, uh, you'll, be, you'll be able to have the use of it. Uh, of like an attack if the king comes here you always have this uh, type of a setup if he takes and then now it's too late it's gonna queen so it doesn't matter that that's the sweet thing about swinging the rook over to the seventh even even if uh, even if he's able to uh, get his king to c uh, c8, you're still winning because you get the opposition and you push and he comes up and oops, not yet, sorry, a little too uh, he has to move. Then you move the king and then you get a Capa Blanca's end, um, end game pattern. Okay. This is also potentially a drawn endgame as well. We're going to set up one that's a draw, which is where the Philidor's position, even though the king is passive, still is a draw because there's no way you can uh, prevent it from uh, not being a draw. Oops, sorry about that. There we go. It's black, it's white to move here. So uh, even if you play rook b uh, b7, trying to get the king away, it uh, it won't work because the skewer won't happen. It does it doesn't matter. He just comes here, and there's you have to move the rook, or you have to move the king. And if you do that, then he activates his rook. So if you move here, he'll just move his king, and then if you move back, he'll just move his king. But if the pawn was right over here and the king was here, you potentially have an idea of pushing it. But you have to be careful when it when the pawns get tight closer because then the black king can actually stop it by protecting the square in front. These, these kind of uh, passive rook, rook, uh, rook positions are strong. This is the one. This is not the strong one. He's talking about your... If your opponent's extra pawn is a knight pawn or a rook pawn, or your king is is in front of it, you should uh, be like black. This is he's talking about black. You should be able to uh, pull a draw in that scenario. Like if it's a knight or a one of these pawns, or even if you get a pawn here and black can get his king there, and even if his rook's slightly passive. He still can pull a draw because that king can hold it long enough for his other rook to get activated, his rook to get activated into the play. All right, let's uh, let's set up that position that Jeremy Silman just uh, told us about here. Okay, so let's move the pawn where this is actually uh, a draw, even though. Um, white is a pawn up. It is a draw here, and it's black to move. Um, rem he says, "Remember, I." He says, "How I promised that you would be able to draw any grand master with ease." He says he promised you that and from this position. I wasn't joking. The idea here is to take away the whole sixth rank. So he, if you play rook h6 here, hey, how you doing? If you play rook h6 here, you've taken away uh, the whole uh, advance of uh, white. Even if uh, he checks here, you can come down and attack the rook. Believe it or not, this, uh, this simple move ices, ices the draw. Basically, he says it's, uh, it makes the draw uh, accessible. The trick of like a check, he says, doesn't doesn't work. Even rook g7 
king e you want to stay in front of the pawn you don't want to go to the side a white has a strong um, d6 if uh, if it wasn't for the cut if he uh, if we didn't cut the king off with h6 which is a double exclam or exclam move if uh, the check would have happened and we played back he would have had king uh, d6 and then even if we traded rooks off we wouldn't have been able to push him off and bring our king in and queen the pawn so king e8 rook a7 trying to cut him off rook g6 because we have to keep our rook on this uh, six that's the only way to hold the draw is to hold the Lucinda position even if he pushes I'm thinking we then can get in behind and then start checking the king e6 is like what we were saying if we got pushed rook g1 is this now is a, a draw not what white wanted to play but he had no other choice uh, he, if he played rook a if he played rook back here rather than pushing rook a check he actually allows the king to come forward and uh, then he would have to check him again the king would come back eventually he would have to push anyways and he would get this position uh, this was kind of like one of my I remember it was a long long time ago my teacher set this position up for me it's kind of one of our first end game positions uh, he asked me uh, if uh, if I what is the best move here and uh, he's, he asked me is it a pawn move to e6 or is it a rook move and we were going over the uh, the Philidor's position and I I said pawn to e6 and uh, with a smile uh, he played rook uh, g1 and he said that this position is now a draw and he, he explained to me how that once you get in behind the pawn, behind the king, you can check, 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 and then eventually you can try to go after this pawn if the king moves away. And there's this is a plain out draw. If rook um, a4 trying to do a, a Lucinda position, oops, one second here, king there, rook a4. It, do, it doesn't matter if, even if he plays d6. Let's try to say even if he plays d6, you can then start uh, um, checking with rook d1, and then if the king starts coming up, then you can do a long distance checks and all different types of. So, White tried their best with a Lucinda setup, but it's a faulty Lucinda because he allowed the king now to come up, and so now that this king barricades. It doesn't matter even if even if you get a uh, Lucinda position here let's say here here and let's say the king comes here or let me see let's say we let's say here he checks we come here oops actually hold on sorry I moved it wrong hey, dislike mouse slips that's what I meant you could take here takes and then you get a draw so uh, it's not uh, after rook e7. I, this is where he says that. Uh, I delete this. Rook a a7 check and king e8. And when white can't make any more progress, so you have to remember when uh, when the check happens, you come here and he comes there, and once you have to keep your rook on the sixth so remember or the third if you're black to stop white from or, or if you're uh, white and you want to stop black you have to keep your rook on the third and you have to wait till they push and then you come in behind and you smile with glee because now you have saved the position uh, otherwise with proper knowledge of an endgame your opponent may have been able to pull a win so you have to <clears throat> always be on the lookout for that okay dokey let's see here let's see today oh all oh, right here 
The next one is trap the enemy king away from the action. This is a this is also how you potentially could win too. Is if you uh, trap the enemy king away from the position. Like if you have a pawn on c, uh, I think it's d e4, king on uh, b5 and rook on a1, rook here. And then king there. And what, who's, oh, it's white to move. <clears throat> As we have seen in the study of our Lucinda position, trapping the enemy king away from the action was an important idea in the winning process, and it is also a key idea in, a, in the defending process. The logic is easy to grasp. grasp. If, you, uh, if you are in the heat of battle and, is, and you are raging, the king of the hill, basically, the king of the hill is this pawn. If white can protect this pawn and it goes and it captures the flag and capture the flag when you're a kid, then this turns into a queen. And so the way to stop that is to cut the, the king off from the help of that. Thanks to our extra pawn and the fact that black's king is far away from the position. White is clearly winning this game. Black is still holding on to some small shred of hope though. If he gets his king in front of the pawn he might be able to set up a Philidor's position. However, White should never allow this to happen. It is necessary for, Black, for White to play Rook to F1 to basically make a fence and, and say to uh, Black, you ain't, you, you, sir, you're not going any further. This is a restricted area. And now our king can uh, trade its pawn off for this rook. This pawn and rook will have to be traded off. And then we win. And it, it happens. Rook c8. Let me see here. Oh, no, this is, a, yeah, it's, it's all over. Rook f7. Rook takes. King takes here, here, here. If he tries, I, I guess, let me see here. Even if he tries here, we could play here. We're in front. And then this, this will queen. Okay, now, now this is an interesting, uh, this is one interesting one, and then we'll go on to more of our uh, exploring uh, uh, small advantages by um, Edward Groomfield. Yeah, it's, it's this one here. So we'll go over that one. It has some uh, of the old grandmasters in the play, so thought it's good to learn from like Karpov and uh, Larison and Boris Spassky, Bobby Fischer, though they knew how to take a small advantage and over time increase it to a victory. So I figured why not uh, take some of their games and uh, go over them. Okay. Oops. Whoa, that was odd. A little, uh, I grabbed the wrong tab there. It's not good. Black to move and draw. So, Black's, Black's whole idea is even though White has a, a pawn majority, if Black can keep White's king out from the, you know, into the fight, keeping the fight gone, then uh, he'll be able to hold. So White White would love to try to get his uh, king involved via up around here and try to get this pawn pushed and then start getting his pawns rolling. And so that's why Black plays uh, C8. And suddenly the White King can't join the fight on uh, D5 anymore to go after D5. And so now it's basically a plain old draw. Uh, king b6. We're trying to attack this rook. 
it is clear that even if we tried rook uh, h7 and uh, king d6, that rook, if we tried rook h here, the king would, uh, the rook would just basically move up one. And if the king moved here, we just move there and I, well, I guess that would be a mistake. So you really can't move your rook up. Maybe, um, hold on. Maybe we could just play rook c1 and just hold on. And if he tries checking, we just move back. We just move and it just keeps going. So, so rook c, uh, c2 potentially would be an idea that um, black could try to go after the pawn and and then rook f6 to hold on to it. Rook c1. Black has no uh, he's not able to get any control of the king in here to undermine the d5 pawn. He's not able to get his king to e2 to free up his uh, rook. So the game is all over. Hold on, let me. I'll be right back. I'll put on a game and I'll be right back. And I'll get. I'll uh, grab my uh, files that I need for to work on our advantage. I'll be right back. Hold on. I'll put the the a game on a blitz game for you. Be right back. Back and ready for action. Okay. Oops, I have to uh, get our board editor up. Okay, where did we stop? Perfect. Okay, we just got done with Larson. Now we're doing. Uh, okay, this is a really good one. The two players who are playing, one of them is white, is. Um, I have to make sure it's built in it right. Oops, I gotta put another eye in there. Oh, 
Oops, I have to put an O. Okay, so no, uh, no, E, V. And the place they played in was... I spelled that right. Let's see. Uh, okay. T B I L I S I. Yep. The, this is. Those are the players, and that's where they played. And we. Uh, I'm gonna get the position set up. Hold on. Clear the board. Uh, okay. Let's see. So. Uh, oops. Right there. This is all based on uh, slight uh, exploiting small advantages. So I have to get whites pawns now. Oops. There we go. And one more should do it. Now we need to involve the queen, the king, and I need to get this queen involved right there. Let's see. Okay, it's white to move. Let's make sure I have it all right. Yep. Okay. White has a slight positional advantage in the form of more active pieces, a more active position of his centralized king, and very important, his uh, pawns are a lot better. He only has two pawn islands, where black has three pawn islands. So a slight advantage, fewer pawn islands. So white played uh, king to e2, e and uh, black uh, checked with queen c2. Black's uh, defense is very difficult after, if he tried uh, queen to g2, uh, e5 would actually be a uh, exclaim move, queen c6, he would try queen c6 to cut the king off from advancing any further and then queen to g5 and now with the act, active pieces of a potential win of the, this pawn with the check it's kind of a scary uh, situation now <clears throat> yeah so let's see here even if we tried uh, a5 even if we tried a5 here, it does not bring anything uh, tangible either because queen g5 here and then king to uh, e5 uh, with, with the ability of checking here would potentially come into power. White, in fact, after the exchange of the c, basically exchanging these two pawns, would have a more active pass pawn further down the board and would be actually winning here. So the queen tried to stay active rather than go to the uh, g2 check. This stays more in touch with white's pawn. So this white queen has to uh, guard this pawn so she has to stay and watch over the soldiers while the king has to run away. So king d5, queen f5 <clears throat> is a is check of course, king d6, king f6, and then queen to e6. And now if we can get the queens traded off, then uh, the pawn end game would actually be won. King uh, c6 was actually, uh, let me see here, king, okay, uh, hold on, four, Oh, king d4, d4. Hold on, what did I, what am I missing here? King d6, queen e, queen d4. Oh, oh, I got it right here, sorry. Had to, had to get that right. Okay. If they exchanged off king h6, d5, h5, 
can take c5, h4, d6 is hopeless for black because this the the pawn race is too slow and you'd have to come here and you'd have to go in front of the pawn and then we move our king and he loses so he has to then now go in front of the pawn again and then now we come here he has to go in front of the pawn and then we win the pawn and now the king has to come there it looks like it's still me. A game at all? Do you have a game at all that you would like to go over? Like uh what who who is he facing? Emmanuel Tall? This is a, uh, it's kind of, yeah, the positional advantage uh, board is a little bit, you know, you have to be okay with uh, how, even if you play here, it's mate, so. But he keeps the, he keeps the pawns on the, he keeps the queens on the board. This is only way to hold, so king c7. We'll finish this up, and then we'll go over a tall game. Okay, queen uh, c3 to keep an eye on this pawn here. Queen uh, to e7 check. King h6. Queen f7 uh, check. And so now this is uh, chasing him down the board. King h7. If king h5, uh, king uh, queen c7, c5 I think is check or is it, uh, oh here oh, we take with check, that's what it is so he has to come up and then queen takes c5 queen f3 uh, queen d5 exclaim and when he takes we play c5 and now our pawn's way too active Black's position is lost. If uh, if he tries, uh, he tried h6, which is a double ex double question mark, which is losing. If he actually tried taking, it's still uh, lost because of uh, d7. And if uh, let me see here, if king comes down, basically we can we come up, and if queen checks, we play here. And there's no way to uh, stop the pawn from just coming straight up the board. But he, he blundered right away, and then queen uh, takes here is a uh, game. It's kind of weird that he, he actually made a mistake like that. That was, a, that was like a big-time blunder. I was pretty shocked. Whoa. And then the other line, he would have just ground him down. Let's see if I can pull up a McCall Tall. Uh, let's see. There we go. Let's see if we if we got a good one from McCall Tall. What's she interested in? Do you want to do a uh, him playing the French defense as White, Roy Lopez? Let's see what. Let's see. Let's see. He had a world champion match. We'll do a notable game: Tall versus Boris. Uh, this is uh, Tall's World Championship one. It should be an interesting uh, one. He's black. Trick. Uh, it's a, the trick of your kid or something like that. It's it's got a nickname. Okay. Let's 
let's take a look to see what we got here. Tall, always. Oh, you like the French defense? Okay. He uh, he played against the French defense. Do you uh, do you want to do one that he played against the French defense? Because I don't know if he ever played the French. I think he played the French, but I'm not sure. It never it doesn't show anything on here. He did. Uh, he played the English. The French is white. The Caracan. The Roy close Roy Lopez. The Roy Lopez. trying to find one. I'll have to next time bring one that has the French, but uh, I'll have to look that up. Hold on, let me get a drink and then we'll get started. Hey, there's the, wow, that's kind of interesting. They have the same, uh, are they relatives? Are uh, they, they have a different last name, right? Bonvenic, Macal, Bonvenic, and Macal Tall. Oh, English opening. Okay. Then we'll we'll do one where Tall. Let's see. Let's do a uh, really good one. This is an interesting one here. This is a 21 move one. He won in 21 moves, so this should be a pretty crushing one. In tall style, of course. white here. I have no idea who uh, some men can is. Must have been a good player in the day. F5 Knight uh, C3 Knight F6 G3 and then e5 so uh, <clears throat> this is kinda like an odd king's uh, king's gambit declined type of thing I don't know what this is this is like a weird a weird move it's like odd because it's not an Indian thing at all but it's English it's like ugh, ugh. E e5 and then the knight comes in Tall is getting everything set up, and it just doesn't feel right for. Um, feels like Black's playing scared. E5, E4 to shut down this bishop. And then D5. Paul, Tall is like, okay, you shut down one spot, I open the other. D6, F3. Now he's going to open it up. E takes, Bishop takes. And uh, his opponent played queen e8. Potentially best would have been like taking like what they're saying. Knight takes, pawn takes, and Tall has more uh, space, centralized space, and he, he'll just work around that and just destroy his opponent. Rook e8, b3, knight g4. Uh, uh, Bishop takes g4. So he didn't have to actually play. He could have just done this and then e5. Bishop retreats. But it wasn't tall style. See, the, the engine's looking at it from a style of, an, of positional. Tall was like an attacker galore. So this wouldn't have been uh, a style that tall would want to do of trading down. He trades down when, when he can basically sledgehammer his opponent. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, tall was just amazing about when when he set a trap and you got caught in it, it was all over. 
and that's what this that's why that's why this move right here opens up an attack right into the heart of of black it, it may be dubious the bishop takes and the pawn takes all that that but it does have a lot of teeth to it it, this just doesn't uh, isn't when tall has a rook shooting down the board e, you know what that knight e4 uh, 92 97 so his opponent's holding pretty well here bishop b2 tall's now going to try basically to set up a rook on f7 now and cause some uh, chaos along the seventh rank Knight f6, potentially taking, actually I agree with the computer on this, taking would have been a lot better, but you have to always be on guard. Now you brought the queen into the fight. Yes, this could come to pass, but look at that now. So you have to always, uh, pros and cons of the position. And then if a rook slides over to defend, talk and then bring his knight in and start um, taking scope on g7 so knight f6 uh, was a mistake this move was beautiful a brilliant move because now you're threatening um, knight to f7 which picks up a uh, oops which picks up the queen ah I'm on there and there with that rook f8 is another mistake Queen d7, they're saying, potentially would have uh, held. Uh, rook f8 is, is an interesting move sequence because he's basically reacting to tall. So queen, c, queen c2 threatens to, um, if we, we play rook, rook takes knight, he takes, we can actually mate. So he played h6, which actually sets up for a mate with rook takes. If h takes g, rook check, king. And I'm thinking that, nope, king h7, ah, check, comes back, and there's your mate. If he takes here, it's a mate in one, so, yeah. Okay, Doki. Let's, uh, we'll get one, we'll get another game of talls. Let me see if we have another, if he has another short one. I, I like all the short ones. Let's see if he's got some uh, quick ones here that, he, that we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, only draws are, are his quick ones. Uh, let's see. Ah, this one's interesting. This is a 19 move one. So we'll have to take a look at here. Charles White and Dummer. I don't know how to pronounce this gentleman's name. So he plays. Uh, it looked like the ready opening, but he played C4 uh, and transposed it into the uh, English open. Simon Williams also um, was an English uh, player when he was a kid as well. Grandmaster Simon Williams. G6. Knight C6. D5. So basically they're they're going down the same type of style like Bishop D7 and Queen here to uh, take scope on this. So he takes and Queen takes. 
bishop g and then uh nah it's okay i'm good i i thank you for the uh invitation but not at this moment uh, g3 was slightly dubious on tall's part I think the later Tall played on in his life, though, the more the slightly more uh, passive uh, Tall got at, at a as a player because he kind of got sick. He uh, he had a lot of uh, addictions that he had, and so he kind of made him not well. And it, well, this wasn't him younger, so I think Tall would have actually as a younger Tall would have more likely have seen e4 but positional tall what played g3 castles and uh, uh, bishop g2 uh oh don't tell me oh good okay that's dubious that this was a that didn't really have any point to it this move does or at least develop the knight here get Get out, get your pieces out. Don't just uh, develop the same piece twice. And his idea is to try to trade off here. So castles, and he went c6. I'm like, what? So just go with your plan. I I know you're gonna drop a pawn. You know, you're gonna drop two pawns. But if this was your plan, go with it. C6 though was. Uh, was part of the plan too, and then they wanted to play here h. Now uh, Tall saw that his opponent was going to play bishop to h3. I don't think he um, should have worried about that because there's really even if uh, his opponent does get it, the development is lagging for his opponent. Tall needs to get a uh, his pawns are rolling somehow. Get his pawns going. But he did shut down his opponent's idea while um, later on preparing d d3. Hmm. Tall played bishop takes, g takes, h takes, bishop takes. And now uh, potentially after we trade here, and if pawn takes back, then we got bishop there. So there, there's some type of and after we take here, he comes back there and it's interesting. So Tall went for more of the bishop trades than knight. The hard part is to kick this knight uh, off of its uh, pinnacle. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard. You know, you have an idea. You want you want this to work really bad, but unless you get rid of the defender, nothing's going to happen. Bishop f5, f4. Knight h1, wow. And then g. That that just, that one. Rook h. He took here. This actually, it holds the position. Because Tall can actually hold a draw now. Even though he hates it, he would hold a draw. He played this. He played bishop takes c. I have no idea why his opponent did that. That has no. Uh, that makes no sense at all. That just went. That just lets Tall win on the spot. D4, and then e3. And there's what really can uh, Tall do? He can try that and check. And then now you take. The king runs. Maybe you can just take right now. If he tries running,
maybe maybe he could just uh, oop, and after let's say pawn up here bishop here now yeah bishop takes and could boom you just want a piece so it's like and it's all all over let's see what do I have I oh I have a um, we'll do a quick Joel Benjamin one. This is um, okay, Doki. Let's let's set up the position right now. We'll get it. We'll get our position set up. Okay, board editor. Alrighty, righty row. Um, You gotta put some work in. That's that's how you get better is studies. You could do a couple games, but you always gotta remember work is where it is. Improving takes work. Oops. Oops. Hold on. Oops. Hold on. Oops. Yikes. Sorry about that. I hate that just some I actually click the tab, sorry about that. Oops, I gotta be careful that I put these right. Uh gotta bear with me just for a second. I'll get these uh oops. I'll get the night night uh taken care of. Get all my pieces um, assembled. Where's the Black King? Ah, right there. Okay, now we got the pawns. Let's get these pawns. I roll. It's kind of like uh, impressive how how much um, how many pawns White has, you know, and how much how many pieces he has as well. Let's see here. So we're good to go. Let's see. Okay, there, 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 there. there. Okay, it's uh, mate, mate and two here. It's white to move. Mate and two. Can you find the mate and two? Can you find the mate and two for white? Um, I wanted to make it some interactive play for uh, for ya. Yeah. Do you have any um, I ideas what it might be? Are you willing to give it a shot? Who's willing to take it uh, the initiative and try their hand at this puzzle? It's a mate and two.
I'll throw out I'll throw out some move uh, orders. Queen, uh, let's see, rook, um, e5. Queen, h4. Queen, d7. Or, rook takes d6. Check. Which one of those moves? would be uh, the move that is um, winning for um, would, would lead to mate two for white. No, no, that was a good try. That was a good try. Actually, I, I'm sorry, I should put rook, uh, not e, it's rook d, e, uh, D6, sorry. I, sorry about that copy. I should have put that in there. Rook D6. And there is no Rook E6. Just look at the position. He says, uh, look for the key move. The white king is, um, I mean, the black king is almost surrounded. See, he, he has this here. And the bishop guards here. The, the bishop guards there, so he can't take. This rook's trapped. This queen can't really do much. So all you have to do is check, right? That's all you'd have to do for uh, white is to check. And so what piece would be a perfect checking piece? So you have control of this, you have control of this. The king can't move, this rook's blocked him in and this bishop controls, protects this pawn. So there is nothing to worry about. You only have to check the king to win. But you have to, you have to do it right. So which queen move would it, uh, are you considering? Queen d7 or queen h4? Queen d7 or queen h4? The rook, uh, the rook's not the right move. None of the rooks are the right move. And it's down, it comes down to which queen move? Queen h4 or queen d d7. It's an exclam move. I'll give you one more minute to choose, and then I'll uh, I'll I'll uh, show you the line. Or if you'd like, and you're watching this on archive on like U YouTube, the channel Chess Cruncher. Uh, channel uh, on YouTube you can uh, stop it here and, and try to work it out yourself okay it's Queen d7 Queen d7 is actually the the move that um, is played It's a difficult mating move. While a strong computer would solve this problem with ease, in fact, it is quite a a struggle. He says, "D uh, D seven threatens uh, queen takes uh, C six check, not not queen to uh, F six. Queen F six doesn't. This is actually a mistake." Because then uh, the interesting thing is uh, c6 is, I think, let me see, what is it? Pawn c6. What am I, what is it saying? Oh, F, oh, I got it. It's like threatening the mate here. Okay, I gotcha. 
I see what they're saying here. Then after night takes. Yeah. Our uh, knight B, uh, B6 is a move that would potentially be a playable, but no. E5 uh, would stop all that, so that's why D, yeah, okay. So uh, H takes, H takes D6. Hold on. Oh, it's to oh, okay. It's tasty six. Huh, that's kind of odd. What 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 am I missing here? Oh, knight f6, sorry. That's funny. Knight f6, mate. There we go. Queen takes d6. Knight f4. That's mate. D, uh, um, d4. C uh, C four is actually mate. The knight is now now seals the king off from the escape on d four. So c four now is mate. And if knight e five, knight e seven is uh, checkmate. And if rook uh, b six, oops. Rook b6, king takes, uh, the rook is mate, if rook a6, king takes a6 is mate, if rook c7, rook a c7, king takes c7 is mate, and if uh, king takes uh, c5, I rotate c5, knight b6 is checkmate. And if uh, c takes d6, knight to b8 is uh, mate. And the, and there's no, uh, and because the rook's pinned to the king in this line. It's a, uh, it, the pin that wins. I'm wondering, can... Can this actually? Oh no, he, he he has to go back. Yeah. Let's see how we're doing on time here. Do we have enough time for potentially? We got enough time for one more. But there was nine nine ways to actually defenses, but each one led to mate after uh, queen d seven. Every one led to mate after that. Okay, let's board edit.
So I'm make sure I have this all right. Yep. Mm -hmm. White to move. Moving to the realm of practical. Now my reader can readers can honestly say that they would even consider the following mind-blowing question. A forcing move. What is a forcing move here? Okay, thank you. Be blessed. Okay. Bye-bye. But this is uh, considered a forcing uh, move. And it's white to move. It's kind of a really... It's one that you wouldn't really think of. But it, it's a forcing move. Give it your best opportunity. Give it your best try. I'll throw some moves out there to help you along. Let's see. Um, Rook takes... F8 check. Uh, knight takes H5. Queen uh, E6. And Queen R. Uh, queen um, D7. I threw four moves out there for you to kind of consi uh, consider. What what would you which one of those moves would you consider to be the most forcing? I mean, in theory, a computer forcing lines. You win in uh, four moves. I'll give you uh, uh, one minute to uh, to uh, think about the moves, and then uh, and then on in at ten eighteen, I'll uh, give you the line. Or if you're watching on and on, and this is a pre-recorded one, you can stop here and work it out yourself, or you can continue watching and wait for two minutes till. Uh, our viewers, our friend, chess cruncher friends have a chance to answer. So we got one more minute and then we'll go over the line and we'll talk through it. I'll give you one more minute. If you have, uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in there. Okay, the correct line is actually queen to e6. Queen e6 uh, allows for the takes and knight f5 with the idea of uh, potentially coming in 
and uh, threatening a check and an attack. If he comes here, um, you can actually take there. So he, uh, the queen can't retreat. It's queen f. And if knight f4, queen e8 check, rook f8 and e2, and then you have check and checkmate. So um, what he actually played was king h8. King h8. Queen takes uh, the rook, and then uh, knight f4, and then e2, or e7, with, uh, with the uh, mating uh, mate to follow. There's no way to avoid uh, mate. Surprisingly, uh, Rook e uh, e6 is the I mean queen e6 is actually the the winning line. It starts the whole chain, and if he tries like knight here, you actually have a uh, double check set up that potentially you can actually. Uh, Thank you. Let me see. Oh no, sorry. You can actually play this here. You and uh, if if then he blocks, you can actually check. He comes there and then it's mate. So surprisingly, you can do a discovery. If he comes here, then you have mate. So there's. Uh, this uh, queen to e6 is a killer move. Do you have any questions before I log off? I'll give you uh, one minute to uh, put in. Do you have any questions or anything that you would like to, um, like maybe that I can add to the channel, like more end games, more puzzles or anything? But I found it very interesting that there's a forcing move that with just queen e6, that'd be a kind of hard one to, to find, but with proper practice you should be able to get it. It's kind of one of those things that uh, our nature is it to sacrifice. But, it, but in chess, sometimes you have to do that, and you get a beautiful combination like that. Okay, well, I'll take that as a note. I want to thank you all for logging on. This uh, we we had uh, I thank you. I wanted to thank you for the raid too, and uh, thank you for all that and bring in um, a lot a lot more to learning and also to having fun. That's the whole point of Chess Cruncher channel is that the Lord has given me a gift and he gave me a great teacher to teach me so that I can share my knowledge with you and uh, we can continue to keep pushing uh, forward we have to always remember like what Bruce Lee says he feared not the, uh, the man who has practiced 10,000 individual kicks but he feared the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times so if we do enough forcing puzzles and we get them down and we get all those forcing moves down, we'll be a uh, we'll be like tall. We'll find all the forcing knockout blows. And like what Yadra Sarawan says, every long journey begins with one small step. And I like um, E Nightingale says we become what we think about. So if you think negative thoughts, like in the little engine that could, if you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. Either way, you're right. And uh, she, uh, Rusty told her that. And like.
like uh, another um, Bruce Lee statement was there are no limits there are plateaus and you must not stay there you must go beyond the plateau that you're at right now and keep pushing for the next plateau and he said um, knowing is not enough you must apply willing is not enough you must do and uh, like what uh, the chest cruncher motto is don't give up get up let me see. I'm thinking that. Um, oh yeah, there's one. There's two more that I was. The, I always like to think about is the ones from Tango and uh, and Tom Thumb Thumb and Mr. Critical. And he goes, um, "You got to treasure your victories and learn from your losses. Treasure your victories and learn from your losses. And remember that mistakes do not define you." It is how you handle the mistake that defines you. Same thing with your training, my friends. If you uh, want to get better, you have to put in the time. You have to make times. Kind of like we have a lot of time for other things that uh, kind of don't help us. It's like the grounds that we always talk about. The uh, the weedy ground is one of the is the biggest one I've noticed in a lot of professional careers that they find things for. They find time for other things, but for the thing that the Lord has given them to do, for some reason, they won't do that. We have a problem <laughs> as a humans with that. We need to follow what the Lord would have us to do with our talents. And then, with proper weeded ground, you'll be able to bring forth great fruit, a great harvest, and it'll honor the Lord and bring uh, glory to the kingdom. But in, in the end, it's what did you leave behind for the next generation too. When it's all said and done and you've got your titles and everything, what is your legacy, my friends? And uh, our legacy is a chess cruncher. So like when we're studying and most are playing and they come over and say, what you doing? I'm a chess cruncher. Like Tigger says, what's a Tigger? They'll ask, what's a chess cruncher? What do we do? We hang up our coat. We hang up our hat. We sit down and study when most won't. We do, and that makes all the difference. And as Leslie so says through the Lord Jesus, and as I say, God bless and all. See you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening. And Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. And we'll keep uh, studying, pushing forward, getting better, and improving at the Chess Cruncher way. Okay, great job. Go Team Chess Cruncher. Hoorah. Be blessed and keep pushing play and learning chess and having fun. Bye-bye.